Yeah, that was from that live set that like interpolate dome show that had like crazy surround sound and dome projection visuals that me and um, me and um, <clears throat> uh, push one stop like toured all over the world basically all the way from like China and Japan to. San Francisco, Dubai. We played in Dubai. It's it crazy. Okay. Anyways, here we go. Vibrous. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<clears throat> okay, so uh, I had a couple thoughts. One would be like, one thought was sort of like, I wonder if you could do, actually, okay, so uh, first thing that I thought is like, I think the only thing that makes this kind of like a little bit too silly for my liking is when the the little bubbly sort of sound starts pitching up. I feel like it gets really silly uh, when that happens. Um, and then I think this transition, uh, you kind of clean it up a little bit. Like, I think you, you just pulling out some of those notes, I think will make it clear, like kind of what's happening. Um, uh, and then the other thing that I thought was like, this, it, it, this is like a really great place to do like a, like a reset rhythm thing where it like either speeds up and then a slower rhythm kind of comes up to it, comes out of it sort of like, yeah, we've been talking about that in the, in this, in the ch server chat, whatever for a while. Um, so that could be a kind of a cool place to, uh, do that. Um, yeah, or the other thing that might be kind of fun is like slow this rhythm down to half of the speed of this one. So I would say like a quarter of the speed of this. And then when this new rhythm comes in, then you have this cool thing kind of happening. I really like doing that, like mixing between two sections. And say you have two different time, uh, two different BPMs. Um, you like, you slow down to half of the new one instead of going up to the new one or vice versa that like you would speed up to double of the new one. And then when the new one comes in, it, it feels like a halftime thing. I don't know. There's lots of options for that kind of stuff and, and you can get some really weird and interesting mixes that way. Other than that, like the, the song in general is gnarly as fuck. I really like like the bassy stuff sounds really like bold and like it has a really cool sound um yeah so I think like you know you were saying it's sort of just like a um first one or um, is sort of like a experiment or whatever I think the experiment worked out like I think there's definitely something here uh just got to keep working on it is Lots of good potential in this, I think. Um, what we get? Uh, no, Thorn, you haven't missed yours. Uh, okay, Thorn, I can put yours at the end. And then hopefully you'll be there. Where are you? Here we go, I'll put you at the end. Okay, um, cool. Nice, we got some more people in here. Okay, great, okay. So yeah, I, th I think this is really cool. I think there's lots of like good potential here and lots of fun sound design and experiments and stuff. I like those little moments too. <laughs> it's cool. Okay, now we have somebody called Iron Imp who sent two tracks. For future reference, please just send uh, please just send one one track because I don't know. I'm, it's hard for me to choose, right? Because I don't know what the track sounds like. So then it it's I'm not gonna. I'm not going to do them both, so <laughs> just send me one track. Okay, cool. Uh, cool. Oh, yeah, and also don't forget to put your sort of explanations in the chat and put your, your SoundCloud in the chat and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, so this is a... An older track from Iron Imp, I guess. Here we go. Some of you will remember, I think Iron Imp was in a lot in the chat last, last week.
quick. Get to the point. <laughs> Okay. Wow. That was uh, pretty intense. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so I guess my thoughts are sort of... Um, I think you're... It's more of a show-and-tell sort of thing than uh, you were looking for feedback or whatever. My thought, in, you know, and you said you were asking about mastering and stuff. I don't think there's... There's not much to do with, like, an old kind of track like that old kind of break core style to make it uh you know to to kind of like bring it into 2021 or whatever um yeah i think it, it sounds good like that i wouldn't bother with like going back and trying to remaster it or something it doesn't feel like it needs it or anything um yeah the video is cool i'm not i don't really go for like gore horror kind of stuff I don't, really, I don't know if it was really gore but I don't really kind of go for that horror aesthetic that much but it's got an aesthetic and it's kind of cool like I like all the kind of black and white stuff uh, Jim Kimchi says don't remaster resample <laughs> which is a great idea um <clears throat> Yeah, cool. It would be fun to run this through a bunch of glitch techniques. Yeah, I think you could get kind of a lot out of that, but I also think, like, um, yeah. I don't know, with those same techniques that you use to, like, kind of chop up those drum breaks, you can chop up basically anything else and get some kind of cool, all sorts of different interesting stuff. Um... Yeah, so I think that's kind of where I would go with it, is like, take those same techniques that you're using to chop up all those drum breaks and incorporate all that other stuff, and then try it on all sorts of any stuff, basically. <laughs> you can get lots of cool sounds. Okay, cool. Now, Foss Grimm, uh, chrom Chromesthesia. Oh yeah, don't forget to put your, ah, shit. Don't forget to put your your sound clouds or whatever in the in the chat. Foss Grimm.
Chor. <clears throat> nice. Yeah, that was really nice. I think, um, so a couple things stood out to me. One was, I think, like, the with those kind of percussions, you can, I think you could pan each hit around a little bit more. You get some, um, uh, get some kind of stereo width for free that way and it'll feel uh pretty nice to have them like like just kind of moving around a bit um uh and then once in a while kind of bringing them in or sp or spreading them out more or having some thing that moves from side to side that kind of stereo movement stuff is is really helpful and i think it's like <clears throat> You know, you, you don't want to overdo it, so it's not like you don't want it to be like a bunch of random stereo stuff. Um, but I think having little moments where you kind of focus in on that and then accentuate your kind of control over the stereo field is like super, super powerful. Um, <clears throat> so that would be kind of one of my recommendations for those those little sounds in there. Uh, the other thing is that this feels like the uh, the beginning of another song here. It's a bit awkward, I think. There's like some pretty big change happening here, and I think like... It's like, the, it's like this thing doesn't quite make enough inertia or momentum or whatever to get us over this kind of long break here so it doesn't feel like this build up kind of continues into this this thing they just sort of feel sort of separate so there's lots of different ways to solve this one way is like just borrow some elements from here and kind of work them in on the other side or vice versa like if you have some elements that you can bring from this side and put them on this side it'll make it feel a little bit more continuous like it'll make it feel like these things are a little bit more related there's also other ways of sort of like if you build up more you'll have a little bit more momentum so that you won't kind of like lose all the energy in this in this like pretty long little break thing here uh and of course you could also like just make the break bit shorter or something so that this transition kind of pulls off a little more smoothly um yeah uh it obviously it's like not a new song like it it does end up in this kind of like same same territory right but it just feels really like the end of a song here i don't know that's just my kind of thought about it all right let's read some comments that semi-distorted synth at the beginning should come back. Subtle stereo. Pressed with auto pan. I'm really kind of against like any sort of like LFO panning. Hi. Uh, hello, source say sound. I just, sure, send it in. <laughs> uh, I feel... It doesn't hint, I feel it doesn't hint to the next section, but the next section is really nice. Yeah, agreed. Like, the whole thing is really nice. There's all, so much really nice stuff going on, and you really, like, it, it's super immersive. Um, yeah. Also, Alchemy mentioned um, uh, one or two spaces where you stop everything musical for a fill could be really powerful. So, like, s stopping sort of the... I'm guessing you mean like stopping any sort of like tonal melody, harmony kind of related stuff to give just sort of like a textural or a percussive sort of fill. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So I think you can, yeah. I, and I agree. I think there's, there's opportunity to do that sort of thing. Uh, it's sometimes it can be hard to do that and and feel like like it, it's it doesn't screw up the kind of the flow especially with something a little bit more chill 
Um, yeah. Uh, but I would, uh, yeah, that's, I, I think it's, it's a good point by alchemy that that would be super, super powerful and you could really get a lot of, you could really make a moment special by, by, by playing with that. Um, I don't know where you can, where it would fit in the best or whatever, but yeah. Anyways, cool. Cool track. Thanks for sending that in. Uh, ah, fuck. I keep forgetting to post the SoundClouds. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. At Source A, if you can't... Um, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Okay. Axel is back.
C'est fucking bon en tabernacle. <laughs> this, yeah, that's great. I really like that. Sorry for my crappy French. <laughs> I, yeah, I really like that. <laughs> uh, fucking, yeah, kick ass. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really have anything to say. I think it's just it's really fucking good. Um, it's cool. I, yeah, I don't know what you would call it, but it's, it's really nice. I kind of agree a little bit with um, Vibrus says, yeah, maybe a part where the six synths just shine. Like, I, I kind of can imagine, like, a section where the synths are kind of more up front and more kind of epic, I guess. But at the same time, there's this sort of, even though it's, like, a really, like, bold track, there's this sort of subdued thing about it that I think is very, very cool. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't... I don't know if I would even really change it. I think it's really satisfying the way it is. It's nice that there's so much, it, it's like there's so much room for that bass to just be like, <laughs> like and there's just so much room for that, that kind of tail of the bass. It's really, really nice. Um, yeah, and the singing is great. Is that you? Is that you singing? It's, it's, yeah, R really, really great job. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, and your voice sounds really great. It's, like, kind of perfect for the part. Uh, really nice treatment of the voice. I like the volume that you put it at, like, how you put it in the mix and stuff. It's, yeah, it, it really works for me. I think you did a great job. Uh, this is also a really nice moment here. I'd almost like to hear those synths get just crazy loud there. I don't know. But yeah, it's, that's, yeah, that's really fucking nice. Um, very cool. Very, very cool. Okay, this time I'm not going to forget to do the fucking SoundCloud thing. Um, yeah, like I could kind of imagine it getting like... <laughs> like just super full on and then you know it ends by just kind of getting super loud and then cutting i mean that's it's like my default way of d dealing with those kind of sections um but yeah uh very cool okay now we have venn venn diagram cope harder <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay. Um, Jesus. Um, <laughs> okay, so I have a couple thoughts. The meow meow thing actually works for me. But it, but it is a little bit silly. Um, so yeah, depending on what you want to do, I don't know if you want to keep the meow meow in or not. It works because it's so weird, I think. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's weird, though. And then, uh, other than that, I think the song is really cool. It has a really nice, interesting flow. This bit here, this kind of weird thing. I think this would maybe be better in a different spot because I feel like after you do this thing this is really nice really class what I would do is come back to this after that so let's go let's say jump back to here or something you know you feel how like that really kind of satisfies it feels like a really nice thing to kind of come back to um, yeah, there's some nice, uh, suggestions. Yeah, the, the noise panning stuff is really cool. Um, yeah, but this is a really nice idea. I think you can go even like kind of what people are saying, like I think you can get even wonkier here. But yeah, I would fig I try to figure out a way to build up to this um, and somehow not lose the energy that you sort of have in here. Because I think part of what works about this track is that it has this kind of like, just kind of, it's a bop, you know? Um, yeah, you can also have another section that breaks the consistent rhythm you have throughout the track. Um, yeah. This is also nice. Yeah, this this last bit is also really nice, and I think maybe flushing this out, like making this you know a whole section here would be cool. Like, I don't know. You, I feel like you could put like a little beat under that. Uh, it could be like its own little thing, like part of this section or something. The answer here to all review is more glitch. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it definitely has a cool. There's a there's something there's something good in here. There's some special going on in here, and I think just like a little bit more work on polishing it up, and yeah, give us the thing that we want after after this. Like you're you do a really big. This is a really nice setup, and I think it makes the most sense to go back to like this kind of thing. Uh, after a thing like that. Okay, cool. Very good. Very good one. Let's put your SoundCloud in the chat. And away we go. I really have to pee, so I'm going to go to the bathroom. And I will be right back. <laughs> Just 
Okay, so hold on, let's see what, what happened. What do I do with all these world points? <laughs> nice. For snap. Huh, for snap, eh? I'll pick you up on that. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, uh, that track is from that Interpolate uh, show that I was kind of touring for, kind of touring, that I was like touring for a long time. Um, I'm thinking about giving it a little refresh or something, or remix, remaster, maybe changing up some parts or something and then putting it out or something. But yeah, uh, we'll see about that. Okay, cool. Uh, thanks, Fibrous, for coming by. And now, is Sunk here? I don't know if Sunk is here yet. Sunk said he'd be here eventually. Not here yet. Okay, we'll bump him to the back of the line. Uh... How soft the ball is, really. Oh, very, very soft. Okay, we got alchemy. Uh, 
This is still in infancy, but I'm looking for other layers to find something to help complete the story. Okay, cool. Let's take a listen. Whoa. Very cool. Okay, so I think, you know, you say um, looking for other layers to add or finding something to help complete the story. So I, I think, like, the thing that I feel like you're missing here is that sort of, like, hook sound. Uh, and in this context, it doesn't have to even be a whole, like, melody or a whole thing. Oftentimes, you can get away with just, like, one sound um, or one chord or something uh, and and then you can just sort of come back to that every four eight bars or or you can continue it every it's like so you can say you have like bang and then like a couple bars later bang <laughs> you know like those you can stretch it out a lot um, and those those little kind of or just come back to the same note or the same sound or whatever. But it, it's like those little kind of, those kind of standout sounds. It's usually something tonal. Uh, you can have a little kind of phrase or whatever. Um, but yeah, that, that kind of stuff really helps to tie this sort of thing together. So, so what you'll get is like, um, uh, it'll sort of like keep keep this thing moving. You have sort of something like that going on. So like this thing. That's sort of that moment that like or like or whatever. Um yeah, and I feel like uh, it's it's also a great moment for that to to put that kind of sound in there. There's just you need something else, I think, to make it a little bit more sticky or a little bit more hooky or whatever, so that so that when you come back to it, it feels more uh, it feels more kind of like like home or whatever. Um, so yeah, so I think like that, that can, that can really, that, that's like what these kind of sections always need, in my opinion, is like, there's so many different ways of doing it and, and you can get really kind of deep into how you do it, but you need to have some like, I don't want to say accessible, but there's like, you have to have this tension between the moments where you're pulling the audience in that you're like, like here's the thing you want and then you take the thing away or you push the audience away or whatever by making the sound weird and un uncomfortable or, or, or whatever and then you give it back and, and you don't like it has to have that back and forth and right now it feels like most of it is kind of the crazy sound design stuff so, and you just need that little like uh, you know that little treat or whatever to kind of keep that balance working um, but yeah uh, right, okay, so Alchemy says some repeating call in there somewhere, blah, 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 you're right, that's what I'm searching for, thank you for confirming that. Cool, cool. Um, so, 
I guess we can talk also like kind of just briefly about like what are some different ways of getting that. Um, I really like, uh, like, so the, the kind of classic ways of doing that are just like put some beepy bloopies on a, in a synth and put some reverb on it. And then you can oftentimes just like put that on the one or on the three of the first bar of every four or something. But this one's nice because you have this different structure here. And, and I think like keeping that is, is what's going to make this all make sense. So even like, um, I, w I think my first thought would be like to put the same chord on all of them except for the last one. So it's like, down, 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 down. <laughs> or something like, you know, that it has like some one note of the chord is moved a tiny bit for the last, the last chord. Or, uh, yeah, I mean, it could, but it can be as simple as just like, like, beep, 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 beep. Like, a, you know, that beep sound is sort of enough that it could, it where it can be enough that it can kind of like, uh, um, you can kind of bring it back. Yeah, I like, kind of like what Kate said, uh, the chromatic walk down. Yeah, that makes me think of, um, I, for some reason now, whenever I hear like the, whenever I think of like chromatic walk down thing, I always think of uh little red riding how do I spell this right writing hood rock manikov there's just some fucking Another epic from Mr. Clint uh, Jesus from Christ there's like some such epic fucking um chromatic movement in this <laughs> song <laughs> I just want to play a tiny little bit of it because it's so tight. You'll have to listen to the whole thing. It's it's so cool. Like that, yeah. Um, very 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 cool. Like uh, weirdness about it. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Really, really. I I mean, again, like. <laughs> I don't know how much this relates to the <laughs> original song, but just it, that's kind of. When when uh, Cade mentioned uh, chromatic stuff, I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> um, uh, this is a nice point. Uh, Cade is saying, I remember talking to my roommate about the relationship between notes and scales, and that if you practice the chromatic scales, you'll be able to identify closer mathematical relationships between the note you play than being able to adapt a wrong note to conclude in a satisfying way. Um... Yeah, I think, like, I've been thinking about that kind of stuff a lot, too, um, of, like, like, yeah, ways of sort of, like, you know, you can use kind of chromatic chords to, like, make this interesting tension, and, and, yeah, I don't know, 
and and resolve things in different ways and stuff. I don't know. I think it's it's yeah. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? I, I actually one of my students is working on this piece. They had this fucking awesome idea of neutral chords. So it's like <laughs> it's like this micro to microtonal thing where like a chord instead of having a minor third or a major third he tunes the third to be halfway between a minor and a, and a major third. And the, the chords sound so cool and so strange. And, but truly sort of like halfway between minor and major, weirdly enough, but you, even though you'd think it'd be sort of, because you're doing this like kind of quarter tone thing, I guess. Um, it, yeah, it just sounds really cool and really satisfying. Um, it's made me kind of, uh, talking with him has made me kind of want to dip my toes into some microtonal sort of stuff. Um, <laughs> chaotic neutral. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. But yeah, really, really cool and interesting stuff in there. Okay, good. Now, Sovi, here we go. Wait, yo, Alchemy, maybe post your YouTube channel or something or post some places where people can find your stuff. I think you'll like that. I mean, I think uh, people will like that. Okay, here's Sobi. That was very, very cool. Very, very, very cool. I really like that. So, my, I had a thought here.
And it's about those sounds. Oh, I wish I could zoom in here. I wonder if like, um, I think like, this is like the only kind of my, my kind of, I, I mean, I love the track. This is sort of my only thought is like, I wonder if there's a, I think if it, maybe if you like layered something on top of this or made this sound sort of transform in some way, like so, so, cause right now we have this very like natural, It's a very, you know, it's like an echoey stick in a hallway sort of sound. It feels very like natural and real. And I wonder if it would be interesting to have that sound, you know, over the course of those four hits or whatever, to kind of transform into something more synthetic or something. Or, and I mean, you come back to that sound a couple times here. So, so, you know, maybe there's some space there to kind of, as the track evolves, that goes from this very, like, kind of natural sound to a bit more synthetic or, or the other way around, that it starts out more synthetic and gets more natural. Although, for me, it feels like the, the kind of the, the trajectory of the piece is kind of more uh, natural to synthetic. Um, yeah, or it just makes me wonder, like, what other sounds could work there? Or or what about, like, a layer with, like, bell sounds or string sounds hitting those same Because there's, like, notes there, right? It just makes me wonder all the different things. Yeah. I, I, fuck, I really wish I could kind of zoom in. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a fucking crazy track though. <laughs> it's really interesting. Really wasn't expecting that. It's really cool though. It almost actually, what it sounds like to me now is like a, it sounds like a muted, you know those like UFO dish things? <laughs> With the little different notes and stuff and you can kind of be like, bung, ba -dung, bung, ba -dung, sort of sound on them. I wonder, yeah, there's so many cool things. I would kind of like to hear that sound, hang drum, yeah. I'd like to hear that sound sort of transform over the course of this. But whatever, anyways, it's really cool already. It's a very strange idea, and, and I think you you pulled it off beautifully. Okay. Let's post your SoundCloud in the chat. Um, oh, let's read some of the chat, actually. Okay, so... A lot of talk about eating stuff for some reason with this track. Tropical house, but the beach disintegrates and you're metamorphos <laughs> metamorphosing into a banana. The stutter effect on the highs really fits into the fuzzy. I'd scattered or more or less the aggressive vibe that comes at the drop. I feel like a newer layer on top and not like an included part. My two cents. I'd scattered or more or less aggressive. Okay. I'm not really sure what that means, but... Uh, cool. Yeah. Sweet. Very cool. Very, very cool. Okay. Jack Lion is back.
That's really crazy. Okay, so... This is really messing with my brain, this one. Uh, yeah, I don't know, I like it. It's really weird. There's, so one thing that kind of keeps coming into my head is like, I feel like I feel like um, some sections feel a tiny bit cluttered or something. I, I don't know, maybe I just... It's like, it's not, they're not really that busy, so I don't know why I kept thinking that while I was listening to it. It's, and now, like, if we go back and check different sections, I don't feel that way, but I, it was like one of the things that I kept thinking while we were listening. Super weird. That, that is a really fucking weird track. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, very cool. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what I would say about it. I just I really like it. It's super super like weird and like it's like hallucinogenic. It's like it's like tri it's very trippy. It's very trippy song. I feel, it feels like it's tricking my brain. Uh, yeah. S so, such a weird... It's hard to even point out, like, what it is that's trippy about it. It's like those sounds... This bird stuff, and the, the, everything's, like, muted, but somehow there's, like, enough room for everything. And there's lots of high frequency sounds, but it sounds like there isn't or something. It's it's so fucking weird. Uh, yeah, yeah, that could help. Cade said, with the chirps, maybe have a more square organization, like more on the downbeats, if that makes sense. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea. Yeah, fuck. That was a cool track. Oh, yeah, and I guess since you just got audio back, um, I don't really have anything to say about that, just that it's fucking weird and cool. <laughs> I like it. I think it's very interesting. Yeah, that's fucking weird. I like that. I like that a lot. Very cool. Okay, esoteric audio. Oh, uh, Jack, put your uh, put your link in the ch in the chat.
Nice. Okay, so I think, um, yeah, I think the, you know, you were saying, uh, this one really needs some direction. I'm not sure how to go about that. It feels like it's meandering. So I think, like, um, it's almost like, it, it almost feels like it's, like, too complicated. And, and some simple element will help a lot with giving it direction. So, <clears throat> or, like, uh, like s simplifying in some way. So the, a, a kind of a fun way of, of dealing with that that I like to do is like, you know, if you want to keep it weird, then from here, you you kind of take the most simple way of making some sort of like build into this or that this develops into something else. Like you've got these kind of two sections already here. We have this and then it changes to this. Right, so, so, you know, simplified, simplified the shit out of it and make this kind of like build up into this, and then once you have a simplified version, then you make it more complicated, take some things away, fuck with it, and then once you've made it so complicated that it doesn't work anymore, <laughs> then you simplify it again, and then once you've made it simple enough that it's boring again, then you complicate it again, and and this kind of process of like going back and forth, to sort of approximate the the place that you kind of want to be at in terms of like simple and understandable and like complicated and cool and intricate and stuff. I find this way of kind of going back and forward until you sort of like get to the, the place that you want to get to somehow like works better than trying to go directly to that, that place. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, t the tempo changes every kick. Yeah, so <laughs> that's pretty complicated. Um, so so what you could do is, like, for example, okay, so the tempo changes every kick, so maybe you export this and layer on, uh, or, like, you write your melodic thing in a different project that doesn't have those tempo changes built into it or something. So you're sort of effectively working at, like, you're constantly working at two different tempos, right? You have your kind of, the tempo of the melody project and then the tempo of the, of the, uh, the main project that has all the stuff going on. Um, there's, uh, or, or, yeah, just figuring out some way to, because otherwise you're sort of, like, it's so complicated that you're sort of just, like, getting in your own way. <laughs> um... I mean, it can also be a good challenge, but just, like, take it, take it slow because you've taken on a huge challenge, so it's going to be hard to get it to work and make sense. Um, yeah. Uh, it's one of those things where the novelty of its existence comes from the process. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, nice. Um... Yeah, and lots of really nice like sound design and stuff in there. Just these kind of like bubble sounds, liquids and just made me think about all the weird little sounds in the world. <laughs> cool. Nice. Uh, all right, and now we have Thorn. And Thorn's back, so kind of perfect timing. Oh yeah, Cade, put your uh, SoundCloud in. I forgot to do it. Oh, <laughs> 
interesting. I think like, so remi <laughs> remixing this, this particular image in heap song, I think is really hard because it's like everybody and their dog has done a version of, of this, I think. Um, and I feel like you didn't give us the, you know, you didn't give us the, the hook. You hinted at it. Which is cool. But I wonder if... It's, yeah, it's nice. And then instead you give us like... This sort of... Which is really nice. Neither of which are really kind of like the hook of your song. Or like the... This is also a really nice moment. And this too. That's really nice. Um, I think like... So I feel like what this is sort of missing is like... It's missing sort of its own hook. And maybe there's one in there that I'm just kind of like not hearing because the Imogen Heap one is so, like it's really what I'm expecting. Like it's cool and you're doing crazy sound design stuff, but like, you know, we all know you can do crazy sound design stuff and, and yeah, I kind of just want to push you to take it further. Like, uh, I think like it's, it's good, but I think like a bit more thought into the organization of it and stuff like, you know, why does this part happen here? Or like what's leading up to this or why like... Does this really kind of bring us here, or does it just sort of end? And then why is this part at the end? Like, why do, why do we go back, build back up to here before it ends? You know what I mean? Like, so I think like, specifically, specifically avoided using the main hook part started as a joke track, basically for Zets. Yeah, I like I like the idea, but I think like. I think you can do that same thing, but like make your, put, it's like sort of put your own hook on it. So it's like sort of like, you know, you're like, ah, I'm gonna tease that hook that everybody knows. And then you like do a different, uh, do it, you know, do a, <laughs> a different hook or whatever. Um, it's actually, there's, this reminds me of this story. I don't know if you guys remember that song, Tarantula, who's it? Who's that song by? Uh, <laughs> tarantula, pendulum. <laughs> you remember the song? Uh, hold up. So, <laughs> I went to this festival when I was a kid. When I was a kid, when I was younger, and uh, <laughs> and this one DJ played like the build up of this and me and my girlfriend at the time were like so into this well we were, we weren't that into this song like we were kind of over it but you know it was we were it was like part of the time where it was still popular right and he plays the this no right he plays this And then went to a different song or something. And for years, we referred to him as like, remember that guy who didn't play Tarantula? <laughs> and like, uh, um, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know. It, that, that's kind of what it made me think of is like, you're sort of setting yourself up to be like, 
Remember the guy who didn't play <laughs> Image and Heap? You know, like, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it's, you know, I didn't, I, I don't hold that against that DJ. I think it's kind of a cheeky move now. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious where you go with it. I think you should keep working on it because it's cool. Like, there's lots of cool stuff and, 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 you know, like, I'm, I'm being kind of hard on you because I know, like, your music is amazing, right? So, and I think we all know that. So, so I think, like, if you're going to do a fake out, like, if you're going to do a joke track, you're going to do a fake out or whatever, like do it 110 million percent, you know, like you, you've got the chops, you can do this in a way more intense in a way more sort of like, you can fuck with people a lot more. And I think that that's kind of what this, this, this made me think of is like, is like, I want to, I want to hear how intensely can you f fuck with it? How much can you make it? Like, you know, if the joke is, like, that you don't play the what you say part, then 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 really build up to the what you say part so that it doesn't happen. Um, <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, or, or I don't know, you know, whenever it is. Because I think this could be really good. Um, <laughs> and I hope you guys like my story about the... <laughs> the DJ that didn't play Tarantula. <laughs> Anyways, cool. Nice track, though. It, lots of... There's good sound design and stuff in there. Okay, Sunk. I'm afraid it's time for Sunk, even though I don't think Sunk is here yet. But whatever. Here we go. In the meantime, we'll open some new ones. Oop.
That was very cool. <clears throat> I, yeah, I think the consensus in the chat is that it's really nice. Uh, or did he... I, I guess if I'm to be super fucking picky, <laughs> the 16th notes hats in the background could be a little bit more varied, either in velocity, panning, pitching, or other stuff like that, just to give it a bit more variety rather than constant string. But that's if I'm being super, super picky. I don't even, I don't know if I even recognize, realize that. <laughs> These ones, right? I guess. Uh. Um... Because a breakdown section without the melody that focuses on texture. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. One thing on a wish list rather than a critique is a breakdown section without the melody that focuses on texture. Um, yeah, I, this section felt a tiny bit long to me. I think it's cool, but like it's it works, but I I don't know for some reason it felt a little bit long to me. Okay, and then the kind of the my my only feedback is the for some reason the kicks weren't doing it for me so what i would do is like uh just get one or two kind of really standard kick drum sounds and literally just like layer or replace some of the the kicks um just to get the first part of the kick because you have nice there's nice like lows there's nice like sort of stuff and there's nice high-end stuff too like there's all sorts of little like kind of patty things to go on top of the kick but it's like that 120 like 80 to 120 sort of range that feels kind of like abandoned or something, 80 to 120 hertz, uh, kind of range that feels like it's not there. You, I, I feel like it, you don't get that kind of like kick, punch out of the kick or whatever. I don't know. Um, it's kind of my only thought about that. And I, yeah, and, and sorry, from like, from having the same problem, I've realized that like the best way is to, for me at least, has been to just replace or sub in or or layer in like little like the the bits of the kicks that it feels like it's missing just like on a totally separate track that's not um as compressed or whatever as anything else just like just to have those kicks that's my only thought it's it's really cool like the chord progressions and stuff are really interesting and it makes me curious to hear this rent the original one um yeah and just really interesting direction and like the way that it evolves and stuff very cool okay cool so i should have checked the email a little bit earlier because we have two wait let me just remember yeah we have two patreon people so pretend like i'm playing these first <laughs> we got jim jim is in
That was cool. I think, um... I would add one or two more melodic things just to play with the like harmony melody stuff just a tiny bit more I think it'll help like kind of like bring it to life a bit or something is it I think even though there's some crazy interesting drum stuff it feels a little bit like it I find it hard for it to sort of take center stage you know uh, yeah but yeah it's really cool it's it's very very interesting and the beat is really nice yeah that's satisfying yeah cool yeah very cool okay I'm Armada Oh yeah, Jim, don't forget to put your thing the uh, SoundCloud. So I had a thought about this this thing that kind of kick drum thing. Um, I wonder if you like. I think my th my thought would be like to because so if you have just one element and it's doing all sorts of like this kind of stuff, um, <laughs> it's hard to kind of uh, it's, it's kind of hard to. Um, um, like f figure out figure out what like sort of meter to hear it at I guess I don't know if that's meter is the right word but like where kind of how to feel it but the thing that's cool about that is like if you have some kind of whatever skittery stuff and then you add in some little like little ting ting sort of thing or bleep or little beep or something like that but that's like more repetitive you kind of like immediately get this like kind of cool groove out of it and that can land like on the on beat or the off beat or anywhere in between or you can do kind of its own rhythm but like relatively steady you can get some really nice 
like kind of interact interacting stuff going on and it, the cool thing that I've noticed about that is that like the really regular sounding straight thing will bring out cool things in the complicated rhythm so like it's almost like the complicated rhythmic part will sound more complicated and interesting when it's sort of paired with something that's a little bit more straight um So, yeah, it helps you kind of contextualize it. Well, that's really cool. And it really, like, so intimate, this part. And the, the piano is really nice and stuff. forget to put the SoundCloud link this time. Very cool. Thank you for sending. We have Jack, okay. Well, we'll send for today. We're just gonna do these last two here. Or three, I guess. I think um, what I would do is like sort of save the drums for later. Um, I think also like maybe another instrument in here. Um, I, I think the other thing is you've got. Hold on, let me try. So you've got this chord in the piano, the like brum sort of thing that happens every couple bars. And I think because that doesn't seem to be moving, I think that's holding your your whole kind of melody harmony thing in one place. Um, you can, obviously there's ways of doing that where you have sort of like a pedal, I think it's called like a pedal note or pedal chord or something. And then that one sort of floats while you like move around that. Um, but in this case, it feels like it's holding the other stuff back from having the kind of like harmonic motion that it, it, it sort of feels like it wants to do, or it's like holding you back from writing the, writing the chords that you want to sort of get to, cause you kind of keep landing back in this one. Uh, and then my other thought was like, just, I think 
you can make the drums like louder and more in the front. So like less, I would say like less reverb or something. Um, I kind of get what you're doing. So maybe a little bit of both or kind of go back and forth between them or something like that. But yeah, I think like you can leave this part more sparse and then kind of come in with the drums uh, instead of like kind of introducing the drums at the beginning. It has this kind of cool like lumbering feeling like it's kind of going through this um, thing and just kind of moving slowly lumbering through through stuff. Um, and then, but I think like, so if you want more of that sort of like lumbering through like a kind of like slow slog sort of thing, it helps, it can help to have like a more, more repetitive melodic thing. Um, and then if you want the opposite, then, <clears throat> or, and then, yeah, sorry, for that sort of like slog thing, it's nice to have like one slow automation movement as well. So you have this like kind of repetitive, um, you know, melody thing, and then you just uh, ch change one or two parameters or something, but just like over a long period of time, it gives it this nice, like slowly evolving sort of feeling, and it'll give you the, the kind of musical reason to kind of get out of it at the end. But yeah, very cool. Nice one. Okay, we got Ordity.
interesting <laughs> cool okay and now source cell finally sorry about the long wait
That was really nice. I think my only main, I mean, uh, Alchemy said an interesting thing. I think simplifying the chord progression right there, I think he was talking about around here, I um, would be more powerful than bring the whole thing back in later. I like that idea. Um, uh, the other thing that I kept thinking is like, I feel like the, the bass is like a little bit too quiet. Uh, and then the lead thing is a little bit too loud, or maybe it's just like the EQ curve in general. I would like kind of pull down the mid, the, they're kind of like the low mids, I want to say, but yeah, it feels like it kind of has this sort of bump like this. Or maybe it's like more like this, so you have like the lows are really cut, but everything else is kind of up already. Like I would make that kick there like way louder, so it's like <laughs> and everything else is you know. <laughs> I don't know. Some of the. Uh, I've been trying to master and balance for days. Is some of the highs, yeah, it's a tad splitting. Yeah, yeah, like I think, uh, here, I'll show you kind of what I would do, I think. I would sort of, like, cause the, I don't know, actually, it's hard to say what I would do exactly. Cause like the kicks, they have the right amount of punch and stuff, so I think just like bringing up the volume of the kicks and the bass and stuff, and then, and then, uh, oh, you have a sub pack, yeah, 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 that's exactly what's happening, the sub pack is maybe a bit too loud, so make sure you just check reference tracks, um, and you want to get a reference track that like, is a good, um, yeah, like, I like, so once you check the reference track and you like how it sounds, don't touch the volume of the sub pack. Otherwise, you fuck up your whole thing. And make sure to kind of go back and forth between it. Um, um, but uh, I think sub, sub packs can, can really help. Uh, um, but yeah, so, so, so anyway, so I think like. I would do maybe something like that. Obviously, you'll see, like in your mix for your track. I think you'll have something. You'll have better control over this. But yeah, I would do maybe something like this or something. So you like scoop out some of these kind of midi things, mid C things. Um, yeah, and then and then yeah, boost those lows, boost them all the way. Um, but you'll see, like, once you, once you do that, uh, once you kind of go back and forth to a reference again, you'll, I think you'll see what I'm talking about. You can rebalance, I use ozone. I would go back to the mix to do the rebalance if I were you, instead of doing the rebalance with ozone. So, like, ozone's going to do it with some weird, like, spectral AI stuff. And it'll sound better if you rebalance in the mix itself instead of using ozone. It's not it's not like a perfect solution. Um, and also, if I think I'm correct in the assumption that ozone, the whatever it is that kind of picks out whether it's drums or not to do that kind of rebalance thing, is probably trained more on if it is like the. AI thing that I'm imagining. It's probably trained more on like acoustic drums than it is on electronic drums. Uh, why ozone when you can lander? Yeah, I mean, neither one is good. Um, let's turn up the stems. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. Cool. Very cool. Thanks everybody for coming by. That's it for me for today. Uh, see you all next week. I think next week I'll do the old time, I guess. I don't know. Uh, 
Yeah. So, uh, see you next week. <laughs>